the live-action Transformers movies. Love them or hate them, you got to admit that they were cool. It's no secret that the mind-blowing CGI work done by the masterminds at ILM, Digital Domain, BaseFX, Rodeo FX, Scanline, MPC, and Weta FX was the real reason why these films succeeded, bringing to life all of our childhood heroes and villains. But as epic as their CGI was, it's the human touch that truly gave these robots their soul. I'm talking about the legendary Peter Cullen, lending his incredible voice to the mighty Optimus Prime, and all of the other incredibly talented talented voice actors who poured their hearts and souls into making these characters feel real. However, something that you likely didn't notice when watching these films is that some of our all-time favorite characters have actually gone through several different voice actors. So today, in this video, I'm going to discuss all of the characters that had their voice actors replaced. And trust me, you're in for a wild ride. So without further ado, let's jump right in. <sighs> Alright, so by far the most famous character out of the bunch that got their voice actor replaced would be Megatron and the story behind why is pretty fascinating. You see, during the production of the first Transformers movie, when envisioning Megatron's character and voice, Bay wanted the Decepticon leader to have an attitude akin to Hugo Weaving. And when comparing Frank Welker's G1 Megatron voice to their rendition of Megatron, he thought that Welker's voice wouldn't fit, since it was too cartoony. Bay would also go on record saying that he felt it would have been disrespectful for him to ask Welker to change his Megatron voice. And so Welker was no longer considered for the role. With the idea of Weaving being the voice of Megatron still in his head, they wanted him for the role. And thanks to producer Lorenzo D. Bonaventura, who had previously worked on the Matrix trilogy, was able to get in touch with Hugo Weaving and get him on board, thus making him the voice of Megatron for the first ever live-action Transformers movie. Weaving would go on to reprise his role as Megatron for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and Dark of the Moon. However, for Transformers Age of Extinction and The Last Night, Hugo Weaving would be replaced by the legendary Frank Welker. So, what happened? Well, it all started in an interview that Hugo Weaving had with Collider on October 15th, 2012. When he was asked, as the voice of Megatron, has Michael Bay called you about the next Transformers movie yet? In response to this, Hugo had something very interesting to say. No, that's a weird job for me because it honestly was a two-hour voice job. Initially, I was doing a play and I actually didn't have the time anyway. It was one of the only things I've ever done where I had no knowledge of it. I didn't care about it. I didn't think about it. They wanted me to do it. In one way, I regret that a bit. I don't regret doing it but I very rarely do something if it's meaningless. It was meaningless to me, honestly. I don't mean that in a nasty way. I did it, it was a two-hour voice job, while I was doing other things. Of course, it's a massive film that's made masses of money. I just happened to be the voice of one of the iconic villainous characters. But my link to that and Michael Bay is so minimal. I have never met him, I was never on set. I've seen his face on Skype, I know nothing about him, really. I just went in and did it. I never read the script. I just have my lines and I don't know what they mean. That sounds absolutely pathetic. I've never done anything like that in my life. It's hard to say any more about it than that, really. With these unflattering comments about his time working on the Transformers trilogy making headlines all over the internet, it was only a matter of time until they reached director Michael Bay. And when they did, Bay was not happy. Firing back on Weaving's comments several days after with a heated open letter on his official site, which he shortly took down after, Bay had this to say. Do you ever get sick of actors that make 15 million a picture or even 200,000 for voiceover work that took a brisk one hour and 43 minutes to complete and then complain about their jobs? With all the problems facing our world today, do you think these grumbling thespians really think people reading the news actually care about trivial complaints that their job wasn't artistic enough or fulfilling enough? I guess the Hollywood Reporter thinks so. What happened to people who had integrity? who did a job, got paid for their hard work, and just smiled afterwards. Be happy that you even have a job, let alone a job that pays you more than 98% of the people in America. 
I have a wonderful idea for all those whiners. They can give their unhappy job money to a wonderful elephant rescue. It's the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Africa. I will match the funds they donate. So yeah, this marked the end of Hugo Weaving voicing Megatron, meaning that someone else had to take on the role, which as we know ended up being Frank Welker. But wait, if you guys recall, Bay said that he thought Welker's Megatron voice was too cartoony, which was the reason why Welker did not get the role. So then why would Bay cast Welker as Megatron for Transformers Age of Extinction? Well, unfortunately, there hasn't been any official word on the matter that I could find but I have a pretty darn good guess. As you guys may or may not know, Transformers Age of Extinction wasn't the first live-action Transformers movie Welker worked on. He was actually brought in for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, where he voiced the iconic Soundwave, as well as Grindor, Ravage, Reedman, and even Devastator. Welker would reprise his role as Soundwave for Transformers Dark of the Moon, and would also be casted as Shockwave. With that in mind, Bay was able to see all the amazing voices Welker could do, and even see his take as the Decepticon leader when Universal Studios worked with them to create Transformers The Ride 3D. Now, of course, recasting the voice of one of the main characters is a pretty big deal, especially when they are the main villain of the franchise. However, since Megatron was rebuilt by the humans into Galvatron, Megatron in this film is technically a different character, meaning that the recasting of his voice wouldn't be as impactful. And it's also lore accurate. Since in the Transformers of the movie, when Unicron reformatted Megatron into Galvatron, Megatron's voice changed since Leonard Nimoy was the voice of Galvatron and not Frank Welker. However, Welker would take over the role of Galvatron in season 3 and 4 of the G1 cartoon. Now, the last reason why I believe Bay casted Welker is because he knew that the fans really wanted to have a movie where Peter Cullen and Frank Welker were Optimus Prime and Megatron respectively. And when Transformers The Last Night came around, he was finally able to fulfill every fan's dream. So yeah, that's my reasoning as to why I believe Bay casted Welker as Megatron. But now I want to circle back to Transformers The Ride and try to explain why Hugo Weaving was not casted as Megatron. You see, Transformers The Ride 3D opened up to the public on December 3rd, 2011 at Universal Studios Singapore, with everyone besides two voice actors reprising their respective roles. One of these two was Hugo Weaving, who was replaced with Frank Welker. This is particularly strange since Bay's falling out with Weaving happened in late 2012, meaning that there must have been some other reason as for why Weaving was replaced by Welker. And well, casting Frank Welker as the voice of Megatron seems to have been a decision on Universal's part. Since in a mini-documentary that they filmed detailing the creation of the ride, they mentioned this. We felt it was really essential for us to be able to, to work with the authentic voice actors that, that created these characters years ago. It's so fantastic. I think the fans are going to be able to, to really appreciate that, and we know that it was essential for us to to make this true and authentic to the property. So yeah, it appears that the reason why Frank Welker was casted as the voice of Megatron for the ride instead of Hugo Weaving was to appeal to fans like you and I. And I gotta say that as a fan, I really appreciated this, since it pays tribute to those who created these iconic characters and the franchise as a whole. Now something you probably did not realize and something I just thought about when writing this script is that the ride is technically the first time we got to see Peter and Frank reprise their iconic roles together for a live action project which I gotta say is pretty freaking cool. So yeah, did you guys prefer Weaving's take on Megatron or did you prefer Welker's? And if you don't remember what each one sounded like, no worries, here's a few samples. You fail me yet again, Starscream. Get them, Earthling. Soon you will all perish. Oh, you have something on your mind, something I need. We shall meet again, Prime. Where we rebuild Cybertron. You turned your back on Cybertron. So with Megatron squared off, let's move on to another character that got their voice actor replaced. And I'm pretty sure that you didn't even know about this one. That character, of course, would be Sideswipe. You see, Sideswipe was a brand new character introduced in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, and Andre Sogluzo was brought on board to voice him. According to Sogluzo, he didn't have much of an idea about the Autobot at first, other than early artwork of the character, recalling that Sideswipe was described to him as being very cool like James Bond. 
but without the British accent. However, when Transformers Dark of the Moon rolled around, Andre Sogluza was replaced by James Remar. Damn, I'm good. Whoa, little Mexican standoff we got here. So then the question is, why was Andre Sogluza replaced? Well, thanks to fellow content creator Jantamore, he was able to interview Sogluzo and ask him why he did not return for Transformers Dark of the Moon. Here's what Sogluzo had to say. I can't speak to exactly what happened. I can only guess. Uh, I was supposed to, as far as I knew, I was going to be in the second film, and I was held for work, like meaning, oh, you're on hold for this date. It happened a few times, like where I was going to do the record, and then suddenly it didn't happen. I'm guessing at the time, that's when Megan, um, she wasn't in it. So I have a feeling when they sell these things, which are 160, 180 million dollar movies to make, they wanted for the press junkets and they suddenly didn't have her. My feeling is I think they wanted to pack the supporting characters with as many known faces as they could to sell it. You know, James Remar is a wonderful actor. He's been around a long time and a lot of, he's a very famous, well-known on-camera actor. Again, I don't know that that's true, but I have a feeling that might be the case. So yeah, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a concrete answer to this. And so Gluzo's theory is the best thing we have to work with until an official word comes out. Now, when it comes to who voice sideswipe in Transformers The Ride 3D, things get a little fuzzy since IMDB and Wikipedia credit Raymar, while behind the voice actors credit So Gluzo. And the TF Wiki credits of both of them? So then who is it? Well, thanks to fellow content creator Amber Jones, she had an interview with so Gluzo, and in it he states that he voice sideswipe in the ride. For theme park rides, my guess has been the voice of a sideswipe for not just trans theme park rides, love. I'm in the second just... film. So with sideswipe squared off, let's move on to another character who got their voice actor replaced. And this next one was the inspiration for me making this video. That character, of course, would be the Fallen. Now, the Fallen was a brand new villain that was introduced in Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, and he was brought to life by the talented Tony Todd, who you might recognize from his role as the Candyman. However, a little-known fact is that Todd wasn't originally supposed to voice the Fallen. Instead, he was actually brought in as a replacement for the voice actor who had already completed all of the Fallen's lines. That actor was James Arnold Taylor, who's probably most famous for voicing Obi-Wan Kenobi from Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, though Taylor's voice work for the Fallen did not make it into the film, his initial casting for the role paved a way for him to become the voice of the Fallen in the various different versions of the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen video game. Now the great machine shall reap its harvest, pulling the sun from the sky. For millennia, I have dreamed of my return to that wretched planet where I too was once betrayed. As for the reason why Taylor was replaced with Todd, just like in the case with Sideswipe, there doesn't seem to be a concrete answer. However, this is what James Arnold Taylor had to say about the situation on his now-defunct blog. Well, it now appears to be out of the bag as to who the voice of the Fallen will be in the film Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. It will be actor Tony Todd. While I'm happy for Tony, I'm also a bit bummed for myself, as I was actually the voice originally, and found out just a couple of weeks ago that I would not be in the film. As I have written previously, I am the voice of the Fallen in the video game based on the film, and the job of voicing him in the game came from first voicing him in the film. I have no idea what Mr. Todd did character-wise, and again, I'm sure it's a great performance. I'm just sad that my performance is lost somewhere in the digital hard drives of Bay Films. Oh well, at least you can hear what I would have brought to the film by playing the game. I can't wait to hear how it all turned out. And I'm very grateful to Jobby Romo Taro and all the folks at Luxoflux and Activision for keeping my work alive in the game. What happened in the end for the film, I do not know. But again, I'm very pleased to still have the part in the game. So yeah, unfortunately, there's no concrete answer as to why Taylor was replaced by Todd. 
However, a fun piece of trivia about this whole situation is that Taylor posted the audio of his edition that got him to pardon both the film and the game. Unfortunately, the download was not archived by the Wayback Machine, thus making it a piece of lost media, and something you could put on a Transformers iceberg. But now between Taylor and Todd, which Fallen voice did you like better? So now with the Fallen squared off, let's move on to another character who got their voice actor replaced. And, well, that character would be the iconic Nitro Zeus. Now, Nitro was a completely brand new character created for Transformers The Last Night. And, strangely enough, depending on the version of the film that you watched, he would have either been voiced by Stephen Barr or John DiMaggio. And, in one version, he was even voiced by both of them. Baby, free at last! Thanks, Megan Troll, I'm free at last! Thank you! You're gonna miss you, Tim. Thank you for your hospitality, Brad. By the way, Enrique. Check sleeping with your wife. <laughs> Baby, free at last. Thank you, Megatron. I'm free at last. Thank you. You're gonna miss you, Tim. Thank you for your hospitality, Brad. I know where you live, Enrique. Say hello to your wife for me. Megatron, they got up out of here. Unfortunate, because I was looking to knock some heads. Megatron, they got up out of here. Uh, I kicked more ass in prison! Now you might be wondering, why the heck did this happen? And well, this time around we actually have an explanation. You see, two versions of the film were released in theaters. The one that was screened in English-speaking countries was the final version of the film, and is the version of the film that ended up on the DVD and Blu-ray. The other version was an earlier cut of the film that was screened internationally with foreign language subtitles. And there is tons of different dialogue between the two versions, with some lines either being dropped, added, or changed completely, including ones that would have made the film make even more sense. And I I plan to cover these two different versions more in depth in a future video. However, in the case of Nitro Zeus, the earlier cut of the film had Stephen Barr as the voice. However, for the final cut, John DiMaggio was brought in to re-record all of the lines, leading to a completely different delivery. To this day, it's still unknown why Barr was replaced by DiMaggio. However, strangely enough, in the digital release of The Last Night, Nitro Zeus's line, unfortunate because I was looking to knock some heads, which was recorded by Barr, is used in place of DiMaggio's, I kicked more ass in prison. Despite DiMaggio providing the voice for Nitro Zeus in every other scene, both actors are credited for the role in the film's credits. And for some reason, the physical home release would credit Barr for Nitro, despite none of his lines being present in the film. So between Barr and DiMaggio, which interpretation of Nitro Zeus do you like more? Now moving on to the next character that got their voice actor replaced, it would be everyone's favorite bad cop, Barricade. And this one is particularly strange since it doesn't really make any sense. You see, Barricade was a character that appeared in the first Transformers movie and was brought to life by the talented Jess Harnell, who is also the voice of the Autobot weapons specialist Ironhide. However, for some strange reason in Transformers Dark of the Moon, Jess Harnell was replaced by Frank Welker as the voice of Barricade. Are you username Ladiesman217? I don't know what you're talking Are about! Are you username Ladiesman217? You. Your time is up. Remove it. Now, what makes this extremely odd is that Harnell provided the voice of Ironhide in the same movie, so it makes no sense as to why Welker was brought in to do the voice. Now, a common theory as to why this happened comes down to the line originally being sound waves, and the editors accidentally giving it to Barricade for this scene. However, this is just not the case, and I have a 13-minute video debunking this theory if you want to check it out. However, to summarize that video for you, I was able to prove that Barricade was a very late addition to the film, and I concluded that because of this, it's likely that Harnell was not present to voice a Barricade in this scene, since he already wrapped up all of his voiceovers for Ironhide. So Welker was brought in as a stand-in to voice the bad cop that we all know and love. And when Transformers The Last Night came around, we got to see our boy back in action, with Harnell behind the mic. A dying knight gave it to a human, but there was too much TRF firepower. So between his three voices, which one do you like the best? Now moving on to the next character that got their voice actor replaced, we have Leadfoot. 
Now Leadfoot was a character that was introduced to us in Transformers Dark of the Moon, and was brought to life by John DiMaggio. However, when Dark of the Moon's sequel, Age of Extinction, came around, Leadfoot was not voiced by DiMaggio. And what makes this extremely strange is that John DiMaggio voices a brand new character in this film, that being Crosshairs. Now, no actor is credited as Leadfoot in Age of Extinction, but it's clearly not DiMaggio. However, when listening closely, it's pretty clear that Robert Foxworth is the one providing the voice for Leadfoot in this scene. Slash down back in the Atlantic just as planned. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. So, you know Robot. I'm an Autobot. I'm an Autobot. Unfortunately, we don't have an official explanation as for why this happened. However, it's highly likely that the lines that we hear from Leadfoot were some unused takes that Robert Foxworth recorded for Ratchet's death scene. This was likely done to save money on the film's production, especially since the scene was really short. So with Leadfoot squared off, let's move on to another character that got their voice actor replaced. And well, that character of course would be everyone's favorite yellow Autobot, Bumblebee. Now in the very first Transformers movie, B was voiced by the talented Mark Ryan, who also voiced Jetfire in Revenge of the Fallen and Lockdown in Age of Extinction. But the story on how he got the role of B is pretty fascinating. You see, Mark Ryan was brought on as the on-set voice actor for all the different robots. This work continued throughout filming and into editing, prior to the actual voice casting of the voiceover talent. During one of his many sessions recording lines, Michael Bay wrote out some dialogue for Ryan to say. At the time, Ryan did not know who those lines were for, and believed they were just some test lines. He recorded them a handful of different ways until Bay was satisfied. And of course, those lines ended up being... A mission to speak, sir. I wish to stay with the boy. Around three months later after this recording session, Ryan got a call from his agent saying that Bay wanted to use the lines he recorded for Bumblebee. After hearing this, Ryan was very confused and told his agent that he did not do any voice work for the character. After some back and forth, he got a call from Michael Bay's office and was able to hear the lines that he recorded. Ryan would go on record saying that if he knew those lines were for B, he would have done a younger sounding voice for the character. And he actually would follow through with this when recording Bumblebee's lines for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now you might be wondering, wait, Bumblebee never spoke in Revenge of the Fallen. And well, that is true. However, Bumblebee was originally going to talk in the film, but unfortunately whatever lines he had were cut, since the writers and Bay loved the unique way B talked through the radio. And Bay wanted to focus more on the twins because he thought kids would like them. However, thanks to a promotional video created for Show West 2009, we have access to a deleted scene where Bumblebee talks to Sam. There's gotta be something else, B. You gotta have a bigger purpose than just me. You can't be the end all be all in your life. What? <laughs> your purpose. Sam! I don't know. Now, unfortunately, Bumblebee would not talk in Transformers Dark of the Moon. However, for Transformers The Ride, in the ride's queue area, Bumblebee has his voice back for a little bit, before it ultimately gives out again. And here, he is once again voiced by the goat Mark Ryan with a younger sounding voice. Greetings, you crew. This is the essence. A human Autobot combat force dedicated to killing the combat and protecting the Autobots. Sorry, Bumblebee. Your vocal processes are evidently still, uh, needing attention. Really thought I'd fix that. Now when Transformers Age of Extinction rolled around, Bumblebee would unfortunately not speak at all. However, in its sequel, Transformers The Last Night, Mark Ryan would be replaced by Erica Dahl, who is actually one of the few sound designers who has worked on every single live-action Transformers movie. Uh, I am Bumblebee, your oldest friend, Optimus. I would lay down my life for you. Now, the reason why a doll was picked to be the voice of Bumblebee is actually pretty interesting and a little confusing at the same time. You see, sound designer Erica Dahl recorded Bumblebee's dialogue as a temporary voice, but once director Michael Bay heard the voice, he knew he had found his Bumblebee. 
According to the creative team behind the film, no one really had a sense of how Bumblebee should sound. Producer Lorenzo D. Bonaventura would go on to say, You really want to match the love you have for the character, and also be very distinguishable from Optimus. He's sort of a teenager, he's a little out of control, but he's really warm and emotional, so trying to find that voice was not simple. We went through a lot of ideas. Director Michael Bay would add, The task was daunting, like how are you going to find that voice? And then he just voiced it. We played it back, tweaked it a bit, and it just worked. Now, as for why they didn't bring Ryan back for Bumblebee is still a mystery, especially since he voiced Lieutenant and Bulldog in the same film. I also find it very strange how apparently nobody knew how Bumblebee was supposed to sound, despite Ryan literally voicing him in the first movie. However, when the Bumblebee solo film came along, neither Ryan or Adal were the voice of Bumblebee, and instead Dylan O'Brien was brought in to voice the iconic yellow Autobot. Please, this is a mistake. I don't want to hurt anyone. As for why this happened, well, producer Lorenzo D. Bonaventura would go on record saying, Since we were approaching this as an origin story, we felt that it was appropriate that you got to hear his voice. That's the simple logic that we employed. The long-term implication of that is different. But the short-term implication of that is since we really are resetting the mythology, essentially, of who Bumblebee is. And so that seemed to us to be appropriate. To get the chance to hear what he sounds like, Dylan has this great quality in his voice of youthful exuberance, and also sort of trustworthiness. I think those are the two qualities that we wanted Bumblebee to have. So yeah, with the Bumblebee movie being an origin story for the character, in addition to being a reboot for the franchise, they wanted to take a Bumblebee in a brand new direction. Personally, I love Ryan's unused Revenge of the Fallen voice the best, but I would love to hear which voice is your favorite. Now with the Bumblebee movie being a reboot, the door was wide open for recastings. Shockwave and Soundwave, who were previously voiced by Frank Welker, were now voiced by the talented John Bailey. Destroy the launch pad. Let none escape. Optimus. Ravage. Eject. Voice location. Detected. Ratchet, who was originally voiced by the amazing Robert Foxworth, was now voiced by the iconic Dennis Singletary. Boy's pheromone level suggest he wants to mate with the female. And Wheeljack, who was originally voiced by the late George Coe, was now voiced by the amazing Steve Blum. Too many of them! This gun is my perfect invention, Ironhide. Ironhide at one point was originally meant to speak in the film, evident by Bailey auditioning for the role. Whether Bailey was originally going to get the role or not is unknown, and it's also unknown why Ironhide's speaking role was dropped from the film. Now, Ironhide's speaking role wasn't the only one that was dropped. Since according to Bailey in a podcast that he had with Sabertron.com, Starscream actually spoke in an earlier draft of the film, where he fired at the bots while saying, Die Autobots, in jet mode before transforming. It's unknown why this scene was cut, and it's even more of a mystery as to who voiced him. Now, there would only be two characters that didn't get their voice actor replaced. Grey Griffin was able to reprise her role as R.C., and Peter Cullen was able to reprise his role as the one and only Optimus Prime. However, interestingly enough, Bailey contributed a temporary voice track for Prime, which the animators used during the animating process. The plan was for Cullen's voice to replace Bailey's once all the details were finalized. However, Bailey's temp tracks were accidentally left in some of the film's marketing material. Pray this message finds you. Our war rages on. You must protect Earth and its people. As for why this happened is unknown, but at GalaxyCon Richmond 2020, Peter Cullen talked about the whole situation, and he wasn't happy. The Bumblebee movie, there was a, they hired another person to do me for uh, during the production, and then they were going to bring me in for the one day because they didn't want to pay me, you know, for any more than they had to. So this guy worked for three or four months, and when I came in, they had actually recorded this guy, and I had to impersonate him impersonating me and his timing was wrong and his inflections were wrong he didn't know how to drag a vowel or he didn't know how to make prime sincere so he'd skip over the things that did and it just i went oh this is horrible but i had to i had to mimic him because they had already animated to his sound 
And uh, that's why he doesn't come across all that great in the, uh, in the movie. The long shots I'm okay on, but the close-up stuff, if you watch that movie, you'll see I was sickened by it. It made me get hurt. So with the recast from the Bumblebee movie squared off, let's move on to its sequel, Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Now one would assume that the returning characters from the Bumblebee movie would be voiced by the same people who brought them to life in that film. However, everyone besides Peter Cullen was replaced. RC's voice actress Grey Griffin was replaced with Liza Koshy. I've lost contact with the Capitol! Humans will hunt us down. What we need is a quiet way in. And Wheeljack's voice actor Steve Blum was replaced by Cristo Fernandez. Too many of them! I was taking in a harmonious moment between a serene butterfly and an unruffled caterpillar. Now, though we don't have any official answer as to why Griffin was replaced by Koshi, we do have a pretty good idea as to why Blum was replaced by Fernandez. When the director of Rise of the Beast, Stephen Capel Jr., had an interview with Uprox, he was asked why this Wheeljack looked completely different than the ones we have seen before. This is what the director had to say. When I got into the film, they had already wanted the Wheeljack part of this picture, but they wanted to redesign it and actually lean more into the science and nerdy part of Wheeljack. They felt like the Wheeljack, uh, I don't know if this was the studio or Hasbro, who was here before me, he was kind of falling into the lane of the other characters. Kind of tough, Ironhide, those kind of vibes. Just didn't feel like enough variety across the board. And so for me, as a fan, I was like, alright, how can I keep some of the essence? But I was like, I'm going to just dive deep into the lore and just give him his whole sort of personality and a different look as we start to develop and move on. But yeah, that was it. It was no shade or callbacks to the other Wheeljack at all. So yeah, there you have it from the man himself. Because of either Hasbro or Paramount wanting to lean more into the idea of Wheeljack as a nerdy scientist, he could no longer be portrayed as a tough guy, and so Blum's voice would no longer fit, which ultimately made Fernandez the brand new voice of Wheeljack. Now, the last and final character that got their voice actor recast as of the time of this recording would be Mirage. Now, the character of Mirage first appeared in Transformers Dark of the Moon, where he was voiced by the late Francesco Quinn. However, for Rise of the Beast, he was voiced by Pete Davidson. He's in a bad mood. He's not talking to anybody today. The little ugly guy in the basket? Look at this face! The name's Mirage! Now I can already hear some of you guys saying Mirage didn't appear in Dark of the Moon, that was Dino. And though he was named Dino in the film, the character was always meant to be Mirage. The reason for the name change has to do with Ferrari. You see, Michael Bay wanted to have a Ferrari 458 Italia as Mirage's alternate mode. However, this posed a significant problem since at the time Mattel, Hasbro's greatest competitor had an exclusive license for Ferrari toys. Therefore, Ferrari did not want their product placement sporting the name of a Hasbro toys trademark. And so, he was given the name Dino to pay tribute to Alfredo Dino Ferrari, the son of Enzo Ferrari who was the founder of Ferrari. Interestingly enough, Dino's Italian accent had to be approved by Ferrari, since they didn't want him to have a cheesy Hollywood Italian accent. And yeah, that's every single character that got their voice actor recast thus far. I'm sure as the years go on, we will see more cases like these, and I will be sure to cover it all in a part 2 when the time arises.